Bombshell claims in a new book allege that when Jeffrey Epstein was arrested on trafficking charges in the summer of 2019, he believed he could make a deal with prosecutors by throwing his famous friends under the bus and sharing the secrets of former presidents Bill Clinton and Donald Trump. In his new book, Too Famous, The Rich, The Powerful, The Wishful, The Damned, The Notorious, 20 Years of Columns, Essays, and Reporting, journalist Michael Wolff claims Epstein believed then-President Trump's DOJ had arrested him with the intention of extracting dirt on Bill Clinton and was willing to comply in order to secure his freedom. Epstein's alleged plan would never play out, however. He was found dead in his jail cell a month after his arrest. So this you know, adds more evidence to the idea that uh, he, he wasn't planning to commit suicide. Like, if if he felt like he had a way out of this, <laughs> right? Then why? Like, then what's the? This cause this completely contradicts the idea that he committed suicide. He might have thought he had a way out of it, but actually did not have a way out of it. He might have thought that he has something of value or these connections to these other famous people, to these political figures, but that ultimately it wasn't enough new information to do anything for him. Right? I mean, this is the issue with Epstein stuff is that, right, it is true, it sounds insane, but it's true that he was right. running this global network of, of pedophilia and had all these connections to other powerful people. And intelligence agencies. Right. right. At, at the same time, he was not it's unclear, you know, to what extent these people knew what was going on, or or how it it influenced them. Maybe not at all. Maybe in some cases, some to some mm -hmm. degree. But it's there's enough there there to 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 not sound like a conspiracy theorist when you're talking about it, right. because there is a lot of truth to what was going on. But also, we don't know everything, and and it it, it can be. I think people, some people take it too far. Right. Although it was a conspiracy, like that's that's right. funny. No, thing. no, it was, like, it was one of those conspiracy theories it's that turned out conspiracy. to be true. It absolutely yeah. turned out to be true. Yeah, and so he, he also made the mistake that a lot of people make of conflating his own power with the power of the system. You know, he felt like because he was in this powerful network of people, and these people run the world. You know, they have conflicting right. interests. They don't meet all in one room reach a decision and then go out and run the world. They have conflicting and overlapping interests. Sometimes their interests align, sometimes they don't. They, they compete, they, they collaborate. Uh, but he's part of this network, he's part of this system. And so then he feels like he's as powerful as that system. But right. that's not how it works. Uh, Randy Andy, Prince Andrew, you know, could find this uh, same could thing find out, out the himself. Same thing. That yes, the royal family is, is powerful. You are not necessarily powerful. You can be cut out. Yeah. In order, and the reason the system is so powerful is that it is able to cut out things that become inconvenient for it. And so, and he did about the most inconvenient thing imaginable. Which is get caught. To, right. 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 The inconvenient thing was getting caught, and having such detailed evidence of the misdeeds of everyone around him. Right. Don't forget when. They raided his apartment in Manhattan, his row house in Manhattan. Uh, it was reported that there were CDs that said, name of famous person, age of person. The, those CDs were reported to exist and to be in the custody of the federal government. We haven't heard a word about any of those. So if that reporting is correct, the federal government is sitting on all of his, what he was holding as, as blackmail for whatever intelligence or whatever purpose he was holding it for, and they've done, as far as we know, nothing with it. Yeah. Meanwhile, Rolling Stone has alleged in a new report that Steve Bannon befriended Jeffrey Epstein because he, quote, thought he was a spy. In the lead up to the 2016 election, Bannon allegedly frequently visited Epstein at his Manhattan home. And this, this article, uh, which I read, and it's based on what is reported in the book, has uh, much more details about those meetings, which seem pretty comprehensive. I think Bannon has denied some of it, but not, or not responded to other right. accusations there. And, and so the key thing here here being that, according to this reporting, Bannon was more willing to meet with Epstein than other people after th there, there was some public understanding that Epstein was what, of what he was doing. But right. allegedly, Bannon was still having meetings with him, encounters with him, and, and seeing if he could use him in some way. And it seemed like, it kind of seems like these are both, you know, these are both toxic figures thinking right. the other one is somehow <laughs> going to make them look less bad, which right. just kind of shows you the mindset of truly loathsome people. Right. And though, remember, it was the late 2000s that he actually went to prison yeah. you know, for 
uh, this, for child sex trafficking. I forget what he, precisely what he pleaded down to, but it was known that he had gone to prison and the Manhattan social set continued showing up at his parties in 2011, 2012, 2013. So, if they're trying to say, oh, Steve Bannon, you know, you partied with this guy and you met with this guy even after a lot of this was known, it's like, okay, yes, much, so much did. more was known, but so did you. So did you, yeah. And, okay, the whole world didn't know about Jeffrey Epstein in, in 2011, but you did. And you still showed up at his party. And you probably talked at his party about how it was weird that you were there, knowing what you know. And looking around and seeing all the weird stuff all over the walls and the cameras everywhere. Like, so, and, you still, and you still showed up. Bannon's there. failing here is he didn't read the room. He didn't know he, <laughs> that it was not, it was not okay, okay right. to meet with uh, Epstein anymore. Right, and Bannon, right, I think what Bannon wants to deny is that he was meeting with Epstein to procure some uh, like child sex trafficking, like that's what he's like. Right. That's the implication to expose there. the Democratic right. Party and its complicity right. in child sex trafficking. That's what. And also because you know he believed with plenty of reason uh, that that Epstein had intelligence connections. There's we, a lot of people talk about Israel. A lot of people talk about Russia. Uh, obviously the U.S. Uh, and if. Epstein had information, you know, Bannon is a broker of information. That's, that's one of the things that he likes to do. Uh, and, and that's what he sees as a source of right. power. So you could, you could very easily see uh, Bannon tr trying to exploit Epstein for that purpose. Right. Especially with the Clintons involved. I just, I just always try to take it with a grain of salt because we're always promised that there are these deep, uh, con provable connections between Epstein and all these other people and that there's evidence and then it kind of trickles out or isn't quite altogether there. We're still waiting to hear more of it. So I'm, I, I have would, would some be good, would be good inherent to ask skepticism. Epstein about that. Yeah, yeah. He, but he's what? I, I know what some people in the room think. I think he just killed himself and it, we should not, that happens in prisons all the time, but. If that does happen in prisons all the time, I don't think he killed himself. Okay, well, we have to have another discussion about that. Uh, <laughs> more rising after this.